What's up guys? Welcome to Rotor Riot. My name is Alex Vanover. I'm Bubby FPV. And I'm Ladrib. And today we have a really exciting episode. I'm back in Orlando with these guys and of course that means we're going to do some type of racing. But we're going to change it up a little bit today. I'm not going to be racing in this. But I have some racing quads for you guys and they're all set up ready to go. But you're going to race each other. Okay. So it's me versus Drew. It's going to be you versus Drew. Yeah, that way I'm out of us really do much of this racing yeah. thing. Nope. So what's going to happen on this episode is I'm going to coach each of these guys individually through a few batteries and then these guys are going to race each other. You're going down. Oh. You're going down. You're going down. You ain't got nothing. Get me a chair. Go get a chair. Go. 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 This year I'm going to be trying to qualify with the multi-GP qualifiers. Um, so I'll be really interested to get Alex's like some tips for him on racing because right now I know nothing. <laughs> so normally when you guys like fly a multi-GP 5-inch quad, this is kind of what it looks like right here. Usually you use like a 6-cell battery. Okay. But it means it goes, whoa, where'd it go? We're not going to use that. What? Why are we going to use that? We're going to use a 3-cell battery. Okay. 2200 3-cell. So do you raise the KV so it's going to be like still pretty much as fast? No, these are your motors. Not really, these are actually. Still six cell They're motors. still 6-cell motors. So you're going to go really, really slow. And there's a few reasons for this. It's going to make you fly really smooth smooth but tight racing lines and okay. that's kind of the idea is if you're using a really fast you know setup like on a six cell battery what tends to happen is people just get carried away with the power and they're just trying to full throttle their way through the track yeah. versus trying to find the optimal racing line and when you get into that pro level of racing if you're not on the correct racing line you're just not going to win so this is going to force you to take that proper racing line and I think make the racing a little bit more interesting. This this isn't my original idea, by the way. There's a bunch of people to thank in the multi-GP community, such as Sean Ames, Armando, and Evan Turner. They actually have a whole series where they take these drones and then they race them on three cell. I'm not gonna lie, a few everything. times I've flown like a true race drone with super high up tilt, very skinny arms are very, very fast, and I do kind of, I kind of struggle to uh, keep them under control. Like, I mean, feel how light that is. I think it oh. also has to do with yeah. the camera <laughs> angle being so high. Whenever you're looking straight, it's just yeah. going like super fast. Right. No, absolutely. So this is the set we're going to be racing today. We have a 533 switchback. We have my brand new Hype Train version 2 motors. You can check those out in the link in the description down below. We have a Foxier a 60 amp Reaper ESC. Uh, we have a Foxier flight controller. We have the Immersion RC Ghost hybrid boards. So that's your receiver and your video transmitter transmitter in one. It's got built-in pit switch. Super cool. We got two capacitors on the back. We have a Lumineer antenna and of course a Foxier camera with a 1.7 lens. I'm curious to see how you guys like that. Does that mean it's like super wide? It's very, very wide. It does take a little bit of getting used to, but I think it allows you to either run a really high or low camera angle, but still have enough field of view to be able to fly. So I'll actually demo the course for you guys as well so you can kind of see the lines I'm going to take. Being able to race through a course is going to make your guys freestyle even better because racing is all about being technical and going through these gates that at really high speeds that are super small and figuring out which lines are going to chain them together. I mean, it's really helped my freestyle and I think it's going to help you guys become even better pilots. You guys ready for the course? I'm yes, ready. Sir. All right, here we go. Okay, so you're going to come around I mean, the tree. Still going. It still is. So you're going to come into this gate. I'm just showing it for you guys. Did you just miss a gate? No, no, I got through it. No, he went through, through it. Through here. Turn. Through this. Boom. You guys need to I'm kind of out. flying it how yeah. I would as well. Boom. So I get Boom. first battery. Around. That's Back one lap. We're going to go a little faster. Try to go as fast as you can. No, let's let him warm up. Okay, okay so now he's... All right, I see. So again, I'm trying to figure out as well, and I'm learning the course. I'm not trying to kill my quad on the first battery. True. I'm just trying to learn where the gates are. Wow, Look at okay. That -turn. Really cutting in there. It is so crazy to see the difference between Lap one and lap two, and now oh, and lap three. Lap three, he's still alive. <laughs> but see, oh, that was just good. yeah, I'm just I'm learning what the quad can and can't do. Mm -hmm. I'm not even full throttling, and this is three cell. Maybe I'm just old and washed up. But and when you guys practice, you're gonna get as many so laps this is as lap you want. four. Yeah, but you're gonna get as many laps as you want during practice. Just once you qualify, you only get. So a that few. was a lot smoother. Yep. But you really have to still correct on that. I mean, yep. I think I think if you could find the right line, you wouldn't have to do that correction, right? right? Agreed. That orbit you've got locked down. Well, the other one, you just cut right into the. So tree. this is how I would probably want to do it right now. It's just so you want to spiral to shave speed. Um, yeah, you can spiral to shave speed, but it's not the most efficient line. Mm -hmm. But if it comes down to like a lack lack of confidence, I know I can hit that every time. The spiral every time. The, the uh, spiral into the gate every time. Like I can come out here. Yeah, because there's I can no do brakes. That. It's not like a car with brakes, so you have to shave off your speed 
with throttling the other way in a sense. Correct. Or letting it naturally, like like that's an air brake right there. Right. So how could you air brake this, this spiral? So there? I could like... I'm like that? Back. Yeah, like, I that feel like this smooth. might be faster. That's yeah, that was, I, I feel that like that even though it faster. seems slower because you have to be patient, yep. you know it's slow in, fast out, just like a... So let's talk about the racing lines really quick. So let's go from the start. We're going to go real slow here. There's really nothing special about this. This is just a 180 degree turn. We found that, you know, even doing that is pretty quick. Yeah. Through here, you don't want to exit too fast because then you're going to have to make a really abrupt turn. So let me demonstrate the um, the wrong way to do it. If you come really fast through here, oh, you say yeah. you're like having a prop wash and you're being inefficient. Yeah. So if you even if you come in slower, look at that, you're already to the next gate. Now this gate I think is gonna be the critical one for you guys. You could come over this gate and so split like us that. it, and that's yeah. good. But I think though when you're going really fast, see oh, how I exit with more really speed nice. though? Yeah, yeah. So good. it's a higher risk line because you're using all your power to come out of there. And also you risk going into this side of the gate right here. Right. Yeah. So the split S is probably a little bit safer because you know you can line up Price flip -flop, boy, and yeah. do that. So what I would recommend you guys is just experiment. You know, When you're racing two guys, sometimes if you're really far ahead, you don't need to take the fastest racing line. If I was really far ahead the in the race, race yeah, you're really far ahead, don't crash, your, don't crash out. So, but if you're like really far behind, you gotta catch up, carry speed through it. Gotcha. Now this line here as well, if you come into this gate too tight, like if you're going slow it's nice, but let me demonstrate what would happen if you come into that too fast and too tight. Because you're going to be coming out of that. Here we go, you're like, you see how I'm prop washing, I'm right. making two turns instead of one? Yeah. So what you really want to do though is you don't necessarily want to come too wide either, but I would come like this, and you see how right when I get to the apex of the turn, right about here, I'm throttling. Throttle through it. And I'm letting the quad naturally descend. I'm not, Pitching the quad down, I'm just letting the quad naturally descend through the gate. So let's do it one more time. Coming out, throttle. Nice. And this is just a straight line. We'll do one more lap. Yeah, 10.3, is that cool? Yeah, it's cool. That was not, uh, that's a, that's a tricky one. It it's is. so unassuming. I would not have thought that that, remember when we were doing the walkthrough, I was like, it's barely a tire. It's not even gonna be hard. And now I'm watching right. you do it, I'm like, oh, that's the hardest feature, isn't it? Yep, and that's the thing. I do like a course where it has one really hard feature because this is an area where let's say, one person is ahead of me, um, but they're taking a safe line. If I came in here with a lot of risk, you know, I might be able to catch them. So that's what makes it fun about racing is you having one really tricky element where maybe if you're really far ahead, you sacrifice speed for a safe line. Yeah. Um, but I would recommend for you guys just going out. You can even just go spend some time. Normally in a multi-GP race, you have two minutes to practice. You don't have to be going through the course. You can just be working on one element. I know a lot of top guys, including myself, will go out and if we're really struggling to find the best line, We'll just find one element to work on. Let's do this as close to like a real experience as possible. I think we should both, um, we should get two minutes. We should both go fly at the same time. I'm gonna give you a little bit more. So, so 3S racing, yeah, now we're done. Okay. So 3S racing, you get more than two minutes because the more flight time. So we're gonna give you guys four minutes. Okay. Once the time is up though, you finish your lap. Okay. So that's that's the multi-GP rule. So Drew, try your absolute best, but know the best storyline is one where you lose. <laughs> yeah, Drew. Are you rolling on this? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, basically no matter what, Drew, it's kind of a loss for you because if you win, you beat up a kid. If you lose, you lost to a kid. <laughs> you really have nothing to gain in this Killing situation. Bubby. Bubby, you have nothing to lose. You no, know, you really have nothing. To here's my spin. Here's my spin, okay? True Dragon Ball fans will know that Master Roshi couldn't allow Goku to win his first tournament because if he did then he would lose his drive to succeed so really I have to beat Bubby today in order to keep his drive fuego you guys are gonna get two practice batteries your third one's gonna be your qualifier it's only gonna be the four laps we talked about and then we're gonna do best out of three racing so normally in drone races like DRL uh, depending on how you qualify depends on the uh, podium spot you get so Long story short, if you have a really fast qualifying time, you'll get a better starting position than the next guy. So what we're gonna do is, once these guys have like learned the track and we do the coaching, we're gonna let them each run their best single lap and whoever has the best lap gets the better podium. Whoever doesn't gets the worst podium. I'm gonna go up to feel the, oh wow, oh wow. Yep. Yeah, I just feel like I'm just going straight. So that was bad, right? That was okay. I mean, you're, again, it's your first lap through the track. We see you do some runs. So the problem, nope, okay. Slow down. I'm, am I actually going fast? Good. 
I'm actually you're, going faster. You are going pretty fast, but okay. you want to be consistent oh. before fast. So again, you can toilet bowl into that. It's kind of where you spin around it like that. All right, so I'm gonna start giving you some coaching here. So let's go through this gate. Really smooth, I want it to be really smooth. Don't try and take the tree too tight. You're not gonna really save time there. Yeah. Just, just you know, try and keep nice and fast though on the throttle around it. Nice and fast on the throttle. Yeah. So for you, I know you like to kind of, that line there, you see how you kind of went in really tight and you almost hit the gate? Yeah. So you can choose to do that line or you can do a split S. So right here, don't try, you don't need to hug it too tight. Just come up, there you go. So Slow and steady. On, like, in my practice, I'm just doing the dive gate over and over, trying to learn it. Is that etiquette okay? As long as you don't take someone else out of the air, then yes. Gotcha. So you wanna kind of try and beware. If you have a spotter, they'll tell you, hey, there's other pilots back off for a moment. That's the etiquette with it, as yeah. long as you're not taking someone else out. Nice, so I like how you're doing that line there. It's a little risky. So right there, you see how you're having to kind of take an aggressive turn? Yeah. So go back out to that gate real quick. I want you to go wider. Wow, yeah, wow. out here. Out here. Not, you don't have to go that wide, but the idea being, look how you have a nice turn. Yeah. Versus you're coming in so tight that you might as well just be split S'ing the gate. Yeah. There you go. So right here, nice and pretty. Yeah, I like to get that altitude just like that. It's a high risk line. There you go. Man, this is great flying. I'm super impressed. So Drew, one thing you like to do is you like to let the nose of the drone dip a little bit too much sometimes. Mm -hmm. There's nothing wrong with that except for it makes you require more power to get out of the dives and sometimes you end up hitting the ground because of that. Okay. So I would recommend to you when, you, when you're descending, remember on your pitch to pull back just a little bit. Don't let the nose of the drone uh, stay too much down. You can do that if your intent is to go really, really fast, but it makes you kind of commit. Like right here, you see how you're getting really low out of, out of that uh, corkscrew? Just remember to pitch back a little bit. Oh, Same that thing power there. limitation. So what you're doing when you come through some of these gates, like when you do the tr around the tree, mm -hmm. you'll, your line looks beautiful, but you're letting the nose, you're not ever pitching back up. Mm -hmm. So what happens is you end up descending and you're using throttle to stop the descent. Right. Stop the but descent. But what's happening is you're clipping the grass and you're getting very, very low. Yeah. When you're in that straight coming to this gate right here, Drew, oh, it's such a beautiful line. Take advantage of that wide open area and use the throttle. You know what I mean? Like right here, throttle. And then start to slow down. But you just have that, that time there. And look at how you naturally, see how yeah. beautiful that was? Because when you let off the throttle, it's naturally gonna air brake you. Same thing here, and then as you turn, lower the throttle. Beautiful, it's risky, but it's beautiful. So when you come into that gate, that's gonna be something you just gotta right. pitch back. Pitch back, you're committing a little too much too soon. There you go, beautiful. I like how you're leveling out a little bit there. That's what I want to see you do on that other gate as well. Nice, nice and smooth, you're looking great. I feel like I do not need to be that wide on that back gate though, like I could be Yeah, you could be pitch, cheating pitch, it pitch, a pitch. lot more. Pitch, there you go. I'm not gonna be able to spot you until you pitch there, so you're gonna have to... Okay, so right there you're coming in way too divey. I need you to level out that. I need you to flatten the drone out a little bit more. There you go, that's a good line, this is a good line. Okay, that's too tight, too tight. You're, you're turning it, you see how you're turning in too soon? I want you mm -hmm. to late apex that. Okay. Late apex. So you're just you're turning in too soon. Again. Yep. So we come through here. I like how the, right, the so distance out. Hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. Then there, there you go. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Oh, that's what I want. Yep. Remember to flatten out there. Okay. Flatten, 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 flatten. Okay. See how you're Oh, I love it. I love it. It's great. But just remember, it's going to be a high I love it. I love it. <laughs> you, woo! That was faster. That was fast. That was really, this is a fast lap, this is a fast lap. Hi, I'm Andrew Camden. And I'm Alex Vanover. And every day, race gates suffer abuse. Race drones slam into them, they bend the structures, they tear up the material, sometimes they're even knocked over. It's truly a sad thing. To keep racetracks built up and looking fresh, it takes the hard work of a dedicated FPV community. And that's what we have here in Orlando, Florida. But they need your help. We need you to visit the link in the description and go to the FPV Oasis Patreon where you can support this permanent racetrack here in Orlando, Florida. For less than the cost of a cup of coffee, you can keep this track built up so that when Alex Vanover comes to town, he has a home. Let's fly together. <laughs> Alright, so to decide who goes first in qualifying, because this is very official, we're going to do rock, paper, scissors between the two. 
Whoever wins gets to decide if they want to go first or second. I feel like I need to stand in the middle of this because there's a lot of aggression right now. Don't touch. This is just rock, paper, scissors. Hey, hey, hey. I'm warning. Don't touch. Don't, hey. Stop it. Don't touch. One, two, three, shoot. So you win. So you get to decide go first. if Let's go. you're going first. Good. Go All right. I get Good job, gentlemen. I get the watch in. Here we go. Okay, Ladrib approaching, about to start lap number one of qualifying. Here we go. And done, bring her in. Final lap was an 18.14. That's your fastest lap. So, 18. So you got better, but the first two laps you made mistakes. Yeah. The final lap you didn't make a mistake, and you shaved off two seconds. And you had a pretty good run though, that was yeah. pretty fast. The pressure, even though this is just us filming an episode, doing our thing, like I still definitely felt pressure once I knew it was official. And this is all just for fun, so like the pressure that racers must feel when it's like, a real title on the line. Yep, gotcha. It's got to be intense. I mean, that was just qualifiers too, and I was like making mistakes that I'd never made before in any of the practice. Like, huh. like when when Drew's qualifying, I feel that pressure for him. Like I feel it because I know what it feels like to be in that position. All right, Babito, about to start first lap right now. Well, I'm pretty sure he smashed me. He smashed I'm gonna you. guess. Let me guess. Uh, what do you think his lap time was? Best lap time. High 15, low 6 or low 6. He did a 15.17 wow. final lap. Low 15. And he did a Jeez. second lap was a 15.4, and his first lap was a 16.5. He has me on that dive. That dive, he just goes through it every time like you should. And one other area is when he comes into this like hobby wing thing that's slanted. When he goes in between those trees, he turns right at it. Mm. Besides that, you guys are very, very similar. I'm not gonna get cocky now because I don't know when the race starts, but. All right, guys, we're gonna have a clean race. Whoa, 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 hey, hey, easy, easy. Drew, I need you to relax. Bubby, Drew, you guys are gonna have a clean race. First one to win two races wins. If you guys wanna touch goggles, touch them now. Good, let's do it, gentlemen, let's go. Arm your quads, we're racing on my signal in less than five. Race! This is gonna be a really close race. It looks like Drew actually with a little bit of a lead even though he started behind Bubby and they're both through our dive gate. We're watching him visually and they are swinging around Bubby with a little bit faster racing line than Drew. This is just the opener lap of our penultimate race right here. Drew Rexing with a lot of speed, keeping Bubby in his sights. They go lap. on to lap right. number two. Drew chasing Bubbito in the number one spot. Bubby with an aggressive line. Drew clipping the dive gate, but Bubby also going a little wide, making a mistake. That's gonna give Drew a little bit of time to catch up, but Bubby now has about a three second lead over Drew as he's about to go on to lap number three. Drew has some catch lap. up to do. Is he gonna be able to make it happen? Lap. They got two laps left to go halfway through this race. Bubby with a really safe dive gate line. Drew coming in really tight and making up a lot of time on him, but oh no, he actually missed the dive gate. That's gonna cost Drew even more time. He's gonna have to make up so much time now as Bubby is going on to his final lap right now with about a four second advantage over Drew. Is he gonna be able to make that up? Who knows, but we're gonna find out right now. Bubby going safely through the dive gate, going through our tree section. Drew though with an insanely fast dive gate line, that's gonna make him 
a little bit more in contention in the race here, but unfortunately for this first race, it's all Bubby FTV. So after hearing you commentate, it's actually like a little bit pressuring. It is, but that's how it feels in a race though. So I was kind of taking that swirl saw, dive right? as opposed to going straight at it yep. to kind of try to stay a little bit safer. Yep, and, and that's sure great. And you know, ultimately you just kind of have to go off of my commentating your instincts and figure out whether you want to you know, play it safe or not. I think and you were in a position too, but it allowed him to go really aggressive and catch you. Yeah. But he well, was really playing Chase. my confidence. Well, Chase sucks. Being yeah. back because I felt all that really? pressure. It was, I hate you. I was like, I can't play it safe. I have to go for it. Especially when it came down to the last lap. I'm like, well, I either really go for it or I crash. And either way, it's the same result. So I might as well just go for it. Yep. And I did, and I caught up a couple times, but then I got sloppy and I missed a couple gates and I had to circle back. It's an yep. honor. You guys were close though on that first lap. You caught him on the start. So he only has to win one more. He has to win one more. You have to win this next one. All right, gentlemen. Are we going to go to a third race or is this going to be it for Bubby? All right, this is it. This is going to be a clean race. Pilots, arm your quads. In less than five. Go! Man, Bubby with a really fast launch with Drew right on his tail. They're going into the dive gate. Drew with an aggressive line. Now a little bit ahead of Bubby, but Bubby making the pass immediately on Drew after going through the tree section. Bubby in the number one spot. Drew goes down. Drew is down after our carousel. Well, Bubby wins. Just absolute choked. I thought we had a, a Master Roshi Goku moment, but really it was a... Uh, Vegeta. A Ve I'm Vegeta. <laughs> Are we really doing that as a second race? I think I gotta race this kid now. Yo, Alex, you wanna race me? What? You wanna go? Yeah, let's go. All right, I don't even need to catch up to you on practice batteries. I'll just go. Bet. Let's do it. Let's, let's do, do it. it. I'll just. This is a lose lose for me, too. <laughs> it's, <a> <laughs> it's anyone's game. Let's go, gentlemen. Arm your quads. In less than five. Beep. has a huge Left. lead. Okay. Yeah, Alex has a three second lead on Bubby. It is looking good for the captain. Coming around tight. Bubby's getting aggressive, trying to play catch up. Oh boy. Alex has a mastery of that dive gap. Bubby flubs it a little bit. Coming in, oh, clip to gate, Bubby. Run your race, run your race. What for Vanover? Lap. Five second lead Vanover's got. It's looking pretty clear how this is gonna go. Vanover can take it nice and easy here. Final lap, Whee! and that is all she wrote. Captain Vanover maintains his title. You know, I expected a little bit more of a lead, so Bubby was right on his butt. Five seconds is a lot. I, think I don't know, man, not from the very first race ever yeah. to Years of racing. You're right. You did very no, good. No, that was very. I was. I was shocked. Awesome. I was good. You guys both was did good. great. Race I was very you. impressed. You both was, ran your race. Can I just say one thing though? <laughs> Watching you fly in the practice runs and the qualifying, I was really impressed by your line choice, the uh, throttle you were taking in the straights. Like you definitely have all the skills you need to be a racing pilot. You have some more practice and getting comfortable at those higher speeds. Man, I, I think you'd be a great racing pilot. Thank you. Could I be a racing pilot, Alex? Mm, I think you should stick to flippy flops. All right, guys, that was really fun getting to try racing. It's something that I always enjoy when I get to do it. It's really a good time. I do think I'll probably be sticking to freestyle. Bubby, you really impressed me with how quickly you picked it up. Yeah. But we are both really lucky to have gotten some coaching from you, man. Yeah. This was really fun. Thanks for coming out here. Yeah, of course. Giving us some tips, helping us improve, letting us fly your drones that Heck are yeah. set up for this. This was really, really fun. Yeah, and they really took a beating too, guys. And they I, did take a beating. I highly encourage you guys out there too. You can do this type of racing super cheap. These batteries are like $10 batteries right. versus like the $40 six cell batteries that you can buy. And you can have a ton of fun out here with these types of batteries and just learn how to race. Thank you so much, Alex, for teaching me and giving me all these really cool tips. Maybe I'll apply them when I go to my first qualifier. Yeah, good Hopefully luck. I, I think you're gonna do great, man. Yeah, yeah. I think you're gonna do great. If you enjoyed this video, leave a thumbs up. Let us know you had a good time. Guys, if you're new to this channel, we post this type of drone content every single Monday, so be sure you subscribe, hit that notification bell so you know when we post these videos. Thank Rip you guys, up, guys so much for watching. We'll catch you on the next one. Woo! Peace!